The Abia State government has described as false reports that the state governor, Alex Uti, spent over 900 million naira on feeding and welfare from July to September 2023. Media reports have it that Uti spent 927 million naira within three months on refreshments, meals, settlement of honorarium, allowances, and welfare packages. However, in a press statement released earlier in the week, the State Commissioner for Budget and Planning, Mr. Kinsley Anno Sike, described the report as a reflection of the mindset of the opposition to create mischief, explaining that the expenditure was not by the governor's office as alleged, but by the entire ministries, departments, and agencies in the state. Joining us now on the morning show for a right of reply and a review of the achievements of Governor Alex Oti of Abia State so far is Ugochiku Okuroafo, Special Advisor to the Governor of Monitoring and Evaluation. is joined by Ferdinand De Kelma, Special Advisor to the Governor of Media and Publicity, and Chinedu Eke, Deputy Chief of Staff to the Governor. Good morning, gentlemen, and thank you for joining us on the morning show. Good morning, Good morning Doc. Yeah, thank Doc, you. Well, me. I see it's a whole team from Abia <laughs> <laughs> to come and do right of reply. I mean, we had this uh, subject uh, on the World Trending uh, segment, and I said, ah, it looks like the people serving in the Abia are very glutinous <laughs> to spend uh, almost a billion naira on uh, pepper soup and jollof rice in uh, just three months. Uh, let's start with you, Gochuku Kuruafo. I mean, you have been in the media, so you, you know this business. You've been spokesperson at the CBN, and now you are special advisor monitoring and evaluation. The report, the budget report, was published by the Abia State Government. But we now have the Commissioner for Budget and Planning say it is a mischief on the part of the opposition. It's not the opposition in Abia that published that budget report. This was published by the government. And the government says, well, there are 73 MDAs. It's not the governor that uh, was eating all the meals. This was for about 73 MDAs, government, the state as a whole. But you in charge of monitoring and evaluation. I would like your comments. And what are you likely to do going forward to make sure that uh, the meals and the honorarium and the welfare packages, you advise the governor that uh, those figures are a bit on the high side? Let's start with you. Well, thank you. Um, Ruben, it's, it's great. To, I, I'm, 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 I'm really happy to be back here. And um, good to see somebody like you uh, doing a great job. And, Rufai has been a wonderful, wonderful companion for you. And thank you so much. What you've done to help raise the level of uh, discourse. First of all, please, we would like to say that those are our numbers and we own them. And our numbers were published, fully responsible for the numbers. And they are completely, completely correct. But as they say, you can lie with statistics if you want to. What we're saying is this. We have a figure that talks about what has been spent on a particular item, which covers all the MDAs, the ministries, the departments, the agencies, and other arms of government. Now, for them to then say that it is for just a particular, uh, the governor's office, is a mischief in it. For us, it's more important for us to step back. Let's not look at the trees. First of all, it's a lie. Even for that particular figure, for the entire state, the MDAs, is 223 million. And the 223 million has to do with issues of the, the uh, commissioning of activities, the special events that we do, people who come and, you know, we, 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 we met a completely derelict system. And we are revising everything. So all the things that you see are the things that deal with all the expenditure across the board. But more importantly, we're happy. We're happy that for the first time, we can send something out there. People are talking to us. And the social contract which we signed with the people is being exercised. The people are asking questions. And we're responding. I don't think that what they have given out, 923 
million. No, it's 223 for the entire um, spectrum, ministries, departments, and agencies. Okay, so invariably you're saying your own data that you give out, give out is wrong? Is that what you're saying? No, 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 it's not. What we're okay. saying is they are looking at classification, and I said you can lie okay. with statistics. You can okay. look at a particular figure and say... So whoever is lying with statistics will get to decide. There's another talk of this PH Road project in Abba of six kilometers at 35 billion. Was there due diligence done as regards that project? Because people have raised concerns about that project. And secondly, I have copious notes here in the Vanguard newspaper that talked about the governor saying he was not going to collect security votes, and that he was going to use it for the people. But now we've seen the security votes not by increase. What is going on as regards that? But let me answer the very first one, which is yeah. about the Portacot Road. Yeah. Anybody who knows um, Abba will tell you that the Portacot <clears throat> Road is the artery. It's like saying that you closed Ikorodu Road. And it's been closed for 30 years. There was a budget that was put out some years back of about eight, nine billion. And nothing was done. People's houses were knocked down. We got Julius Beggar. People said it couldn't be done. For the first time in the history of the, of the state, in a long time, Julius Beggar is back. Um, the World Bank is coming. All the people who they thought would never come to Abia State have come in. We showed them Julius Beggar. Everybody knows. Okay, so that is that 35 billion just five? It's not 35, what? it's 32. And 32 billion. And, and was it transparently announced? <laughs> was, was due process followed in that contract? <laughs> That's number one. No, yeah, so go ahead, talk okay, about that. Okay, thank thing. you. The figure is 30 billion. It's you not. Say 32, he said no, 30 no, billion, they, which they, is the billion. In fact, they, no, no, 32. Then they gave us a discount of. Absolutely. So is it justified and was due diligence followed in that contract? Of course. Oh, yes. of course. Was well, it advertised? If you, go, if you go to, of course they did. Go to Ministry of Works and you lay hand on the information there. The, 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 the truth is that the opposition, yeah, because we have to say the opposition, they expected us that if a government is won, uh, awarding a contract, I am not the one to announce it. It is the Ministry of Works that does it. People will bid, and that was exactly what happened. It was done through the Minister of um, uh, Works, and the road in question is not 5.7 mil uh, uh, kilometers; it's 6.8 because it starts from Asa Road, not from not six kilometers. Yeah. So yeah, six point eight. It's not from port, number one Port Harcourt. It's from Asa Road. What they awarded in 2017 started from Port Harcourt Road, and they, it was um, five point something kilometers at. Nine point something billion. That was in 2017. You can do the math and see the difference. And now, what? Like he rightly mentioned, this is Jilos Beja, a reputable construction company, and this is a federal road. It's important okay. because we don't have time. So it's what, a federal road because you we could go back to you're ask. Saying, you're saying it's justified. Also, let's talk about security votes. Why did the security votes increase tremendously? Okay, let me do a follow up yes. to that. And the government promised he was not going to take security votes. I have on record here in Vanguard newspaper that Thank he said you, that. Sir. We. What the governor explained, and of course he did it in different, you know, different campaign grounds. We were used to people using our security votes as their personal money. At the point, people assumed that security vote is the fund that the governor can use at his discretion, which is wrong. So the governor said, I wasn't going to do this. The governor was, of course, you require security votes to fight insecurity in your state. And you, are, you were aware of what we met on ground, on assumption of office. Look at Law Panther. People were being kidnapped and killed. Just a few weeks ago, you saw the documentary done by Al Jazeera. You saw skeletons. You saw decomposed and decomposing bodies. So that's the why the security vote increased. I'm, I'm coming again. There were arrears on assumption of office. Security chiefs in the state met with the governor and said they were being owed months of arrears. He sat with them. They discussed. Okay. He started to defray okay. these arrears. Okay. Okay. A whole lot of things. You saw the equipment, you saw other have been done. You saw the homeland security people that are being owed by this government. A whole lot of things. So the facts are there. They know that the governor is prudent. If you come to the state and speak to the people, if you come and see what's on ground, we are doing here for the sake of people outside. But when you come to the state, you will agree with me that the people are in love with their government and the facts are there for anyone to see. And at that proper time, we will support you people to come. And take a look at what is on ground. Do. We have an armada of personnel from Abia State. That shows how important these subjects are to you. But let's hear from 
Ferdinand Komadi, uh, Special Advisor Media. Uh, that's that's oh. uh, Ferdinand oh, Komadi. You are the Ferdinand. Yes, I'm Chine Du. I'm Chine Du AKK. You are Chine Du AKK. Okay. Yes, please. Don't. Well, it's our, our deputy chief of staff. Where, where you storm our studio with uh, <laughs> three persons, we can mix up the identities. Of course. But you are deputy of chief of staff. That's that's understandable. Okay. Yeah. I'd like you to talk about what Governor Alex Oti has been doing since he assumed office. Okay. Because, so, I mean, he's been a newspaper columnist, he's been in the private sector, and he came into that office with very high promise and expectations, right? What have you guys been doing beyond meals and uh, welfare <laughs> packages? Can you give us an idea? All right. Thank you so much, Doc. It's very good to be here. Um, and I like the question because it helps me highlight how Dr. Alex Uti is actually a different leader. When we came on board in, uh, May, on May 29, the first thing we did was to look at the budget we inherited. Very important because, I mean, this is the governor who has been writing, who has been saying, look, we have to be prudent. And that reflected in what happened when we took over. So we looked at the budget and we were looking at certain line items that we felt, look, this area, for instance, in the office of the SSG, we had to say, look, this budget needs to be reduced to something different. So we combed through all the line items to shed, you know, cut off something reasonable from them and moved it to the Ministry of Works. What we inherited, the budget we inherited was 17.4 billion in the Ministry of Works. We increased that to 30.4 billion. And that explains why in five months, Governor Alex Oti commissioned six roads in Aba. It's everywhere. You can find out. You're, 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 I mean, you are big in the, in the media space. You can call people in Abia State to ask them if that is what is happening. That explains why we are running a zero pothole policy in Abia State. In Omaha, in Aba, if you see any pothole that hasn't been fixed, that means it will soon be fixed. That's what we are doing. That explains why we renovated the um, General Hospital in Amachara, right? It was just there. And then we came in, renovated it, and bought equipment. That explains why if you go to our, the diagnostic center, just to opposite FMC in, in, in Omaha, you won't believe it. Because it was a center. And then at some point, the state government had a partnership with Mikio, you know Mikio in Oshodi. And then they came, they were running it. At a point, they couldn't because there was no support from the state government. They ran away, they fled. We renovated that. We bought equipment. If you go there, they perform eye surgeries. In fact, I know of people from my community, about 15 of them that had done eye surgeries in that place in the last two, three weeks. So this is part of what we are doing. And then the most important thing is that there is this new lease of life in Abia State. Just go around, ask people, ask pe keke people. People, you know, you know what happens? There is no more agberos. We don't have them in Abia State. So keke people pack and then go to uh, POS operators or bring out their phones and just pay their, 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 their um, uh, taxes without anybody having to grab them, having to beat them, having to punch them to do what they ought to do. So Alex Oti is redefining governance in Abia State. And we are not just the people saying it. People of Abia State are the ones saying it. They are seeing the change. The um, Portacot Road that Mazi just talked about, the road had been abandoned. And I, I think we sent uh, an, uh, the video of that to somebody. It, it, it needs to be shown. If you see the level of excavation that Julius Beja is doing on that road right now, because it was totally abandoned. I, I, I was uh, seeing reactions on, on Twitter yesterday when they saw that video, and people were saying, can you say that this has been a road? And yes, a major road in Abia State. If you come to Omaha, the entrance to Omaha, as you are entering the state capital, it looks like just a glorified village. If you come there now, Cranborg is working heavily, day and night, to ensure that the road is expanded to six lanes. These are the things that Alex Oti is doing. And we are not a government of, of Coke and Fanta. We are, not, we are not really here to talk about feeding, budget. If it's about feeding and budget, <laughs> okay, maybe this ma might sound insignificant. The government eats once a day. I eat once a day. I'm not a food person. Most of us in the administration, we, we, we don't care about food, right? So that we can't be bringing the very big issue of governance to, okay. to Coke and Fanta so, so, and, and Sprite and pepper so, soup. So, 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 so as, 
has Julius Berger started on that road. Yes. Prior to that time, was already a culvert or a gutter dog on that road before now. So that, that, that's another question. Uh, thirdly, why is that the IGR numbers are plummeting and reducing in the state? Exactly. So there's, a question. there's an explanation. Let, 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 there's an let, explanation. Let, me, let me tell you about that road. Yes. Was there a culvert done already before now? Culvert? Or gutter done on that road? It's not a gutter issue. $58 million was taken for the construction of a deep tunnel years back because we must prepare that road for proper evacuation. If you don't take out the storm water, it's a problem. The $58 million, nobody knows where it's gone to. Instead, something else was done and it failed. This is a road that just because Julius Bega has come in and they are taking their time to try and drain that road, dry, drain that road, land values are going up. Asset values are going up. People are going back. Whole, a whole school turned into a refuse dump. Now it's being okay. turned into, yeah, that's the Igbo okay. National High School. Okay. Crystal Park, a five-star hotel in Aba, was abandoned. Okay. Land values are going up there. Okay. Now, let me okay. tell you a little bit that. about the kind of government that we have. Mm. We have somebody from EU that we called in. Former direct um, um, CEO of Microsoft. Former um, somebody from um, from Fema. We have how many professors? These are people who left their jobs, their personal um, interests, to come and okay. run the because, state. Because so time, it's a because, new because because we need to wrap up by ten. Yeah, okay, you can talk further on it quickly, but tell me about how the IGRs are going now. The, uh, IGR, the, the, the government oh, believes. No, just, the just government believes. Just hang on a minute. Just hang on a minute. Let, let him speak. Tell me why the IGRs are going down. Thank you. During the campaigns, the governor repeatedly said something. He defined tax as government share of the prosperity it has created amongst people and said, if you not created, if not created prosperity, you have no moral grounds to ask for tax. So on assumption of office, he gave tax holidays. Flying revenues, it was, everything was stopped. Nobody was paying because he needed to do something. The people were like people who were in bondage. So for several months, it was just about a little over a month ago that we started collecting tax. So, so we are the writing tax. the history. We are setting the structures in place. Okay. In the past, okay. agros will chase you, force you, do all kinds of things. And we knew that these things were affecting ease of doing business. So we needed to take these things away. We knew we were going to pay the price. But okay. we have okay. started so the process of had a tax restoration. Free, that's why the IGR reduced. Yes. Yes. Tell me about the protocol progress wrap up. Quickly. All right. All right. When the, the, the people we took over from uh, awarded the contract, it was at $9 billion. They owned up to that. They said it was $9 billion. That was when dollar was 305, right? And that was about $29.5 million. And they broke down people's houses, demolished everything. No compensation was paid. I think that's been said before. No, but it's important. Yeah. It bears repeating. It bears yeah. emphasizing, yeah. right? They broke down everything. No compensations were paid. Today, if you check 30 billion naira, it is less than that amount of money that they spent. Have you paid compensations building. now? Absolutely. We are paying compensations. In you fact, you are paying if, or have you paid? We have paid. We have paid. And we have paid. paid. But, but let, let me let, let me okay. let me add. We need to go. Let me add. Let me add. So you've not paid compensation. Let, for let, let me add. No, 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 we're not demolishing we, anything. We're not We are not demolishing anything. We didn't need to pay. But in Abia Tower, between Abia Tower, between Abia Tower, for the first time in the history of the states. People are demolishing their own houses themselves because of the way we went about it. Okay. We had town hall meetings. Town hall meetings. Okay. If they have to go now. Dr. Dr. Silver, yeah. thank, you. thank you very much. Uh, the thank personnel you. from Abia State, Ferdinand Koma, Ugochu Kokoroafo, and uh, Chinedu AKK. I hope so that much. the people of Anambra State have been able to Abia. listen to you. Abia. Of Abia State have been able to listen to you and also other Nigerians on this issue of budget report and implementation and the performance of Dr. Alex Oti as governor of Adias.